produces the big picture, an official television report of the United States Army, produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Master Sergeant Stuart Quaid. Today, the young man of America must face up to this fact. When he is 18, he can be drafted. More and more, he is coming to realize the value of planning ahead to fulfill his military obligations. To do this, to plan ahead intelligently and advantageously, he should understand his rights and privileges under the Reserve Forces Act, one of the best sources of information for practical, personal advice on the choices open to young men is the local Army Reserve Training Center. Let's go along with a father and son as they visit the local armory in a Connecticut town before making a decision on how the boy will fulfill his military obligations. They have an appointment to meet the father's friend and former Army buddy, Major Jim Wright, unit advisor to the local reserve unit. Dad, this is a pretty big place. Yeah, bigger than I expected, too. I told the Major we'd meet him near the entrance. Come on. We're a little early. The Major should be here pretty soon. Hi, John. Oh, hi. Hey, that first guy's assistant manager at the supermarket. The other fellow's a clerk at the bank. Nice bunch of men. Hello, Bill. Jim, glad to see you. My son, John. Glad to see you, John. How do you do? You don't look a bit like the photograph I saw you. Bill, it was during the Battle of the Bulge that you got sentimental. It was winter, mind you. And your dad insisted upon showing your picture to everybody he could get to stand still for a minute. Seems you had just entered kindergarten. Big deal. Come on into the office. Make yourself at home, Bill. <clears throat> Sit right here, John. Evening, Sergeant. Evening, sir. Is this man waiting to see me? Uh, yes, sir. He wants information about the uh, Army Reserve enlistment programs. Well, come on over. Get another chair, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'm Major Wright. Fred Stevens, sir. Meet John Peterson. Hi. Hi. And John's father. Glad to meet you, sir. Fred, how are you? Sit down, Fred. Well, Sergeant, tell Captain Murray that I'll sit in on this demonstration tonight. Yes, sir. No reason why I can't talk to both of you young men together. How old are you, Fred? Just going on 21. And you, John? 17. You're still in high school. Yes, sir. I graduate in June. I'll be almost 18 then. Captain Murray gave a talk at your school a couple of weeks ago explaining the Reserve Forces Act. Were you present, John? Yes, sir. Did you get a pretty good idea of the choices you have for fulfilling your military obligation? Well, pretty good. I don't think I could pass an examination in the subject, though. Do you plan to go to college? Well, that's what I'm not sure about. I'd kind of like to start earning money as soon as I can, and also fulfill my military obligation as quickly as possible, whether I go to college or not. Okay. We'll come back to that. Fred, are you working? Yes, sir. Good job? Mm, yes, sir. Well, I mean, do you see a future in it? Well, that's just it. It's got a good future, and I don't want to lose it. I got a raise yesterday, and the boss asked me how I stood with my military obligation. I told him I stood nowhere. So we talked about the reserve, and he agreed to give me a six months leave of absence if I joined. That's why I'm here. Good enough. Your problem's comparatively simple, Fred. You have what I call a straight line problem. If you should be drafted, the advancement in your career will be interrupted for two years, which is something you want to avoid. 
Fortunately, you're in a position to choose an alternative method of discharging your military obligations. Men in the age bracket from 18 and a half to 26 can join the Army Reserve and fulfill all their obligations by serving six months of active duty for training and five and a half years in the Ready Reserve. You serve the six months of active duty training at a camp in the United States. You return to your own hometown, attend training sessions one evening a week for five and a half years. And during these five and a half years that you're in the ready reserve, you go to a summer camp once a year for two weeks of field exercises. That's it. Well, how long are the evening sessions, sir? Two hours. Two hours once a week. And two weeks at summer camp. Right. One more point, Fred. You can sign up immediately, but you don't have to begin your active duty training for four months in case it's inconvenient for your boss to let you go right away. I'll tell him that. Furthermore, any time you put in here before you go on active duty will be credited to your ready reserve service. Great. You understand, of course, that as soon as you complete six months of active duty training, your draft board suspends all its actions concerning you, as long as your record in the ready reserve continues to be satisfactory. Yes, sir. I like it this way. I, I mean, I'd, I'd rather volunteer than uh, be drafted, if you know what I mean. Phil, do you think we know what he means? Well, I don't think it's very hard to figure out what he means. What I like is the fact that he means it. Check. John, most of what we've been talking about applies to your problem as well as to Fred's. Well, let's analyze. You're 17. You're graduating from high school next June. And you're still undecided whether or not you're going to college next fall, right? Yes, sir. Well, John, there's no two ways about it. You fellows between 17 and 18 and a half get a very good deal. You do the same six months of active duty training, but you serve in the ready reserve for only three years. You are obligated to only three years of weekly training sessions and summer field exercises. And after that, you're in the standby reserves for four and a half years, which calls for no drills. Another thing, John. A high school student has the privilege of joining the reserves and beginning his weekly training sessions one full year before he graduates and goes on to his six months active duty. Well, what would be the advantage in that? There would be two advantages. First, the know-how which you would acquire in this period would almost certainly facilitate your promotions during your three years of ready reserve service. And second, this pre-active duty time would be deducted from the four and a half years of your standby time. Something to think about. Jim, could you kind of give us a picture of what this uh, active duty training would be like? Sure. Let's start from scratch. When a man enrolls, the first thing we do is give him a general physical examination right here. Our doctor checks his blood pressure, heart and lungs and so forth, just to make sure he has no disabilities. Then every man is issued a basic uniform, enough to get him to camp where he'll get his full issue. Active duty training programs begin at stated intervals throughout the year. The men who have enrolled at the various reserve centers are sent to the camp nearest their homes for their basic training. Buses take you from the railroad station right to your company area in the camp. You will find everybody friendly and businesslike. The first three days in camp are taken up with what we call processing. You'll probably get the feeling you're a pretty small cog in a very large machine. 
well, in a way you are. But you're also an individual. Everything that's done to you is really being done for you. Immunization shots safeguard you against contagious diseases. More physical examinations. But these are for the record, your permanent record. You'll get a chest x-ray. And anything that needs correction, like teeth, for instance, will be done for you. You'll get your full issue of clothing now, and every item will be individually fitted. Shoes are fitted with special care. You're expected to present a smart, soldierly appearance at all times, so you get the wherewithal. Step by step, you get briefed on all the things you need to know. The importance of the company bulletin board, for example. What we call housekeeping gets a lot of attention. You're given precise instructions on how your bunk should be made up. And how the articles in your footlocker should be placed. You might get a sour impression of army discipline when the sergeant tells you it's got to be done exactly this way and no other. But after you've soldiered a while, you'll find out there's a good reason for these regulations. Orderliness maintains cleanliness. And cleanliness is a basic ingredient not only of health, but of good morale. A fighting outfit with good morale will never lose a battle that can be won. Meanwhile, of course, you've been eating. The chances are you're a little surprised how good the chow is. And it's certainly plentiful. Meals are based on master menus which are made up each month for the whole army by professional dietitians. You get a balanced diet, period. When the processing is completed, the rest of your first week at camp is taken up mainly with information sessions on specific subjects. We call this orientation. It means setting you right. For example, an officer from the Judge Advocate General's office gives you a talk on military justice, informing you of the fundamental principles of military law. At another period, you're given a talk on military courtesy with demonstrations. The chaplain gives you a friendly talk. It's not a sermon, it's a down-to-earth, man-to-man talk. And he lets you know that he, or the chaplain of your faith, is available for individual interviews whenever you have any personal or family problems that you want advice on, or need assistance in handling. But even this first week, which we call Zero Week in the training program, is not devoted altogether to processing and orientation. Physical training begins. get your first instruction in dismounted drill, the art of moving from place to place in orderly formations. The procedures of guard duty are explained to you and demonstrated. Your responsibilities when on guard duty are impressed upon you in no uncertain terms. The week is wound up with an inspection personal appearance, the fit of your uniforms, the condition of your barracks, your foot lockers. You've had a busy week, boys, but you really begin living the second week. The first phase of the active duty training program is called basic training. It lasts eight weeks, and it's the same for everybody, regardless of what branch of the service a man ultimately enters. Basic training is intended to make a soldier out of you. A rugged soldier, an alert soldier, an aggressive soldier. A 
marches get longer and longer. This basic training will introduce you to muscles you never knew you had. And something else. Long about now, you begin to think like a professional. A soldier who knows how to take care of himself. You'll get up in the morning feeling like you could lick your weight in wildcats. But these eight weeks won't be all just strict discipline and grueling marches. We don't try to make a machine out of you. You'll have time for fun. A hot game of basketball. Volleyball. And of course, baseball. At the service club, you can relax. Play your favorite game. Read. Shoot the breeze. Or have a sing fest. There'll be Saturday night dances. You'll also find a hobby shop at the camp, open every evening and weekends, where you can make almost anything you've a mind to. Tools are supplied free. Power tools, hand tools, and the cost of materials is nominal. Church services for all faiths are available to everyone. At the conclusion of your eight weeks basic, you pass in review before the commanding officer and his staff. He and his staff, as well as all your instructors, have worked as hard as you have to make this a day to be proud of. Following this review, you will probably get a two-week furlough. The second phase of your active duty training is called advanced individual training. By now, you have chosen the branch of the service which you prefer. Let's say, just for example, you go into the armored branch. That means tanks. In the armored branch, you would spend 10 weeks in advanced individual training, which is a somewhat longer time than any of the other combat branches take for this phase of the training. A tanker has a lot of technical stuff to get squared away on before he can get into tactical maneuvers. Sight adjustment of the gun, for example, is done with precision instruments. It takes a lot of patient practice to become a good tank gunner. Cutaway training tanks are used to enable instructors to work with tank crews and units. A tank is a powerful piece of fighting equipment. You fire these guns at first on a special range using sub-caliber ammunition. Then you go to the tank range for advanced target practice. I won't go into all the details of the tanker's training, but when you finish advanced individual training, you're ready for tactical unit training in the field. Here you practice maneuvers under simulated battle conditions. The tactics will vary, of course, according to what branch of the service you're in. But in any case, you bivouac in the field. Maintain all the security measures you would employ in an actual combat situation. Learn the methods and procedures of supply service, gas, oil, and ammunition.
night maneuvers are also conducted, where the problems of teamwork and security are, of course, more complex than daytime maneuvers. You get four weeks of this tactical unit training, learning the importance of teamwork in combat. winds up your six months of active duty training. One final week is taken up with graduation exercises, turning in equipment, processing out, and so forth. It all adds up to exactly six months, including your furlough. Does that sound like something you couldn't take? You make it sound good, sir. Sounds good to me, too. You understand, of course, boys, that you can choose whatever branch of the Army you prefer. Infantry, armor, field artillery, combat engineers, or one of the technical services like uh, Signal Corps, Military Police, Medical Corps. And there are other agencies that you can specialize in. Military intelligence, civil affairs and military government, psychological warfare and so forth. There are 18 branches altogether. At this center, however, as of now, we have units in only seven branches. So you would have to choose one of these units if you wanted to do the remainder of your training in your hometown. Well, I'd like a branch where I could work uh, with automotive electrical equipment, sir. That's ordnance, Fred. Our maintenance units here are very popular. Count me in, sir. You want to join up this evening? Yes, sir. Good. What pay do these boys get, Jim? Oh, yes. But you get $78 a month during your active duty training. And a full day's pay for every evening is spent at the center. And of course, you get full pay for the two weeks of summer field exercise. The pay goes up, too, as you advance in rank. Now, here's a list of the units at our center. Now, you will notice that under each unit, there's a group of specialist courses listed. Now, each one has an MOS number. MOS means Military Occupational Specialist. Within our seven units, we have 40 specialist courses to choose from. The one you've chosen, Fred, is MOS 3912. Well, Jim, you sure made the picture clear to me. Do you have any questions, John? Well, suppose after I finish my six months active duty, I decide to go to college after all. But I go to a college away from home. Well, you simply do your once a week evening training in the area of your college. It's usually no problem. The reserves have training centers all over the country. I see. Well, Jim, I don't think we should take up any more of your time. John has my consent to join the reserves. But I'd like to tell my mother about it before I sign up, sir. Sure, John. As a matter of fact, we require the consent of both your parents since you're under 18. Thanks a lot, Jim. Now that you're stationed here, we gotta see a little of each other. Positively. Okay, John, give me a buzz when you get squared away. Nice to meet you, Fred. Thank you, sir. Sergeant Malone. Yes, sir. Good seeing you, John. Sure thing. Fred Stevens wants to sign up now. Yes, sir. Come on over to my desk, Fred. Thank you, sir. Right. Let's see what they're doing in here. Looks like a class in electronics. Yeah. This is the formula for Ohm's law. Where R equals ohms, I equals amperes, and E equals volts. Any two knowns of Ohm's law will give you the unknown. You know, Dad? Phil can learn a lot from some of these specialist classes. With over 40 to choose from, you ought to be able to pick one that would help you in civilian life. Please don't pace. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, come on, Bill. Don't keep me waiting. What did you find out at this uh, reserve training center? Oh, we had a long talk with my old buddy Jim Wright. About John's military obligations. Mm. Yeah, we tried to get squared away on what's the best thing for him to do. 
Has John decided not to go to college? Mm, practically. That is, he's about made up his mind to get his military service behind him and, and then make up his mind about college. How does that work out, Bill? Well, if he enrolls now in the Army Reserve, he can finish a full year's training before he graduates from high school. And this won't interfere with his taking a summer job or his studies at school. The uh, training sessions at the Reserve Center are uh, one evening a week. Then, come June, when he graduates, he can begin his six months tour of active duty. After that, he can plan his future with a completely free mind, as far as his military obligation is concerned. There was something interesting in the paper this evening about the effect of military experience on young men. They took a poll of young army veterans. Here it is. 78% felt that they'd become more considerate of others. 84% felt that the experience had increased their ability to work. 25% considered their education was much improved. And 96% said that military service had increased or maintained their faith in God. You know, it figures, Madge. Boys that age want to be uh, men. They, uh, you know. Let me see that paper. I'm going to pick the signal corps. It's one of the technical services. I'm going to be an electronic specialist. Well, you know, radar and stuff like that. That's one thing I forgot to ask the Major. I'll have to check with him tomorrow and let you know. He did say, though, they send you to the camp nearest your home. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, sure, I'll write to you. But don't expect any fancy letters or stuff like that, after all. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think you're okay, too. Today, thanks to the Reserve Forces Act, the young men of America can fulfill their military obligations and help their careers at the same time. Coupled together, here are two reasons why more and more forward-looking youngsters are enrolling in the United States Army Reserve. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, your host for The Big Picture. The Big Picture is an official television report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station. <laughs>